maybe I clicked the button. There we go. We're recording. Flying Monkeys Wargaming Podcast. Before gaming was easy, it'd be your mom. We're doing a little bit of a different thing here today. Um, you know, we usually talk about the competitive wargaming scene, other things. I'm trying to add different kinds of content. Uh, today, I have one of my buddies, one of my best friends, and also a friendly local gaming store owner, uh, Derek Richardson, with us. Hey, Derek, what's happening? What's going on, man? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into the gaming, uh, how you wound up owning a game store, um, all that good stuff. Go ahead and throw it out there. So uh, when I was in uh, fourth grade, um, like Christmas fourth grade, somebody got me the D&D Red Box for Christmas. And uh, like I was the DM for all kids in school. This was this was back right right before the whole uh, satanic panic happened with with D and D. D is going to corrupt your children and all that. But like I knew from a real early age that I liked gaming. That's like I remember thinking in fourth grade, like as I was DMing on Friday afternoon, I was like, oh man, this is the life. <laughs> like, can you make money doing this? And then I just sort of shelved that that thought for a long time. Then uh, I I've always been a gamer. I picked up. Uh, uh, 40k in 91 uh, at uh, Air Capital Comics, a store that does not exist anymore, because um, uh, they had moved to a new location across from the Wichita Mall, and they, they had these huge tables and layouts and terrain. I'm like, oh, it's dope. Let's do that. And so um, uh, I'd been a computer programmer for a long time, and uh, about 2010, I was just like, I'm I'm really done with this. <laughs> I'd like to do something else. And uh, my parents had encouraged me for a long time to open a game store. And uh, now, you know, I'm good, responsible corporate job, make the money, get the benefits, do all that. And uh, parents both died in 2010 of cancer. And I was like, oh, shit, I, <laughs> I should go do this. So uh, I opened the store in uh, April of 2011, and it's been a decade. And I, you know, have not regretted it a day. Well, good. So, you know, it brings us to nowadays. Uh, you and I were friends before I owned a store. Managed to stay friends, owned a store, opposite ends of town, but we still work together on a lot of things. And it's actually done pretty well for the both of us. And one thing we were predominantly going to talk about here today was, you know, the, the way that GW has been pretty much since the, oh, I want to say last fall was when I noticed it getting kind of rough to be a store owner and get a hold of product, get a hold of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I wrong on that? Has it been, has, has your experience been any different or has it changed or? So locally here, we got shut down from March 25th to May 3rd. Right. So we had a good six weeks where we were closed and and uh, th- that initially was the hardest part. But when we got reopened, like our community really returned pretty solidly. And so things were good throughout the summer, and I was like, okay, well, we're going to find a way to, to work our way through this. And uh, uh, right about August, like, it just it just seemed like end of August, beginning of September, the wheels started to come off, and things got really hard. And it was right around that same time that, that uh, some of the gaming companies started having an inability to meet the demand. Uh, for what you'd ordered so they'd have like you'd order stuff and and as they were drawing down on inventories that were in the distributors warehouses to start with things were good but um one of the problems with the pandemic is that everybody started ordering everything online right and to do that you need cardboard shippers and so cardboard uh, stock started getting eaten up faster than anybody had the ability to replace it and so right around uh i want to say September, October, first real signs in uh, gaming manufacturing started to pick up where people were like, Evergreen started going out of stock, and we just didn't have the ability to get copies of them. And um, uh, at first, it, it, it seemed like it was a problem that maybe was going to correct itself in the near term. Uh, but uh, uh, was it November or December when that barge with all the the... Uh, cardboard uh, turned over on the East Coast. I'm not sure. I don't remember. It was around uh, that time, though. 
<laughs> there was this huge barge that was just loaded with um, uh, recycled cardboard or cardboard to be recycled that turned over and essentially just dumped its its load in the ocean when it turned over and made everything non recoverable. And it was at that point that people started to, or people in the gaming industry started panicking, especially if they make like cards, like because uh, Pokemon exploded in popularity during the the pandemic. Like it was. It was kind of something like uh, kids were playing Pokemon. It was something to do, something they've always done. But there was also a lot of adults that I think were seeking a, a return to their childhood to get something comfortable to to make them feel better during the, the pandemic. And so, like, Pokemon stocks starting late last summer just started disappearing everywhere. But the problem with that is, is that they're made essentially of cardboard. And so card game companies like uh, Wizards of the Coast and the Pokemon Company Limited had the double whammy of not being able to meet increased demand, but also not being able to meet the original demand in the first place. So things just started getting uh, more difficult from there. Yeah, I as soon as I order the day Pokemon shows up in my shop now, it's gone. And uh, I don't know how you do it, but I mark mine up at a premium. Like mine's, you know, it's it's about as high retail as I can go without feeling like I'm gouging people and it still flies out the damn door. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I make it where it's no discount, but it's still like, I have to limit it to one person because uh, there are people that um, <laughs> I was in target on Monday and uh, I went, I went by, they have a card section up near the register and uh, I was going to get some, some uh, um, like, like toilet paper and, and tissues and stuff and there's a guy with a bullhorn and a clipboard and he's standing over by the card section and there's this line of dudes uh on the opposite side he's calling them over one by one and i realize as i'm walking by he's calling them over one by one to go down their card aisle because the pokemon stuff has been restocked and uh you know it's it's uh it's there's two o'clock on a monday afternoon grown men and yeah. their muslin six-year-olds out of the pokemon no six-year-olds to be found yeah because they're school right and uh like it's all just you know pokemon bros and um i i asked the guy i'm like like is this really necessary and he's like oh yeah 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 um he's like they know when we restock because they have people um in each store that kind of watch the store every day and as soon as we start restocking the shelves that one person calls the rest of them and they all show up right oh yeah there's a I'll have to. I'll try and get you the link. But there's a there's a local group that I got turned on to that basically they post in when a store gets a restock and everybody hits the store and floods mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and basically raises the prices. And um, so that's kind of the environment, you know. We, we've paint, you've painted a pretty good picture of like that's the retail environment we're in right now, mm -hmm. as far as owning a game store. You know, there's a there's a real sense of scarcity among the community. On top of the sense of scarcity from the community, there's also FOMO, you know, the whole fear of missing out. Yeah. And so with with that, you know, predicating what we're going to get into, you know, keep that in the back of your head because you have gaming communities out there that have basically, they're, they're buying it as soon as it gets there because they think it's going to be gone. And, and they just don't want to miss out. So they're, they're buying it if, if they don't need it or not. They're buying it because they don't want to have that regret of past it and not be able to get it later. And so that kind of you know steers us into the direction that we're talking about with what's happened with Games Workshop. What's going on with owning a game store and having a... Um, you know, if I had to pick like the top three things that go on in my store... Uh, for sales wise, you know, Games Workshop is one of those, and I, I, I don't know where you're at. Um, no, same. I, I do a little bit of different products than you, and you do a little bit different products than me on some stuff. But in general, I think Games Workshop for the both of us has been a significant part of our business for a few years, and mm -hmm. and we have you know a pretty healthy and thriving local community around it. Uh, a lot of people that attend events, they buy product, you know, and so I'll let you go first. Um, so what have you seen out of Games Workshop and how have you felt that's, you know, directly affected your business or, or changed how you do business? What's what's going on with you in Games Workshop and your store and what are your concerns? What are you where do you see this going? Where do you see this ending up at? 
Oh, it's been it's been a bit of a mess the last six to eight months with Games Workshop because while Games Workshop is not my it's not always my number one seller. It, like it, it it switches places with the with the depending uh, right now on Pokemon and Magic and board games. But it's always in the top five, like somewhere. Like it's usually top three, but it's my most consistent seller. Like if I go and I do a, a, a sales report on everything, like my most consistent amount of sales throughout the month comes from Games Workshop. And it's been a problem in the pandemic because starting about uh, September last year, Games Workshop started slipping in their ability to uh, meet reorders. Just not not the new stuff, but just reordering the stuff that I normally carry uh, on the shelf. And I try and carry at least one of everything and two of the, the, the top 200 range. And... Uh, I just like the shelves now are like half bare. Yeah, and we we do differ there because, you know, you pretty much carry the whole range, and you've always pretty much carried the whole range, and uh, I pretty much carry the the bare minimum to not be in trouble with GW, <laughs> and and I've noticed that like even the the bare minimum not to get in trouble with GW stuff gets mm-hmm. zeroed out or back ordered yeah. when I do it now, which which is a weird place to be. It's like I'm not ordering. You know, crazy stuff that nobody's touched or hasn't wanted for two editions. You know, mm-hmm. I'm pretty much ordering the stuff that they tell me I'm supposed to keep on the shelf, and like mm-hmm. I'm not getting those items, which is kind of peculiar. Yeah. It, it's a it's a combination of scarcity and people like they want something to do, they want to build models, they want to paint models, they want to put stuff together to put on a table, and. A lot of times people are just like, they come in looking for X, Y, and Z. They can't find it, and they're like, okay, I'll take Q. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, so what, what happens with that, in my opinion, and, I, and us being, you know, both of us play Warhammer. We play Games Workshop, um, all shapes and forms, you know, going back 20 years and 20-plus years. And, and you know, we, we, are, we know the people in the community. We know what happens, and... You know, honestly, what happens is I see guys, they'll hit my store, I don't have it. They'll hit your store, you don't have it. You know, they'll go hit Hobby Town, Hobby Town doesn't have it. And then they pretty much just order it online. Mm-hmm. You, you know, and it's it's a shame. And then there's a lot of guys, too, that, you know, they come into the stores. They might hit your store, hit my store, hit Hobby Town again, and, and, then, uh, and then go online. Or what's happening now is I feel like a rise in 3D printing. You know, it's... Yeah. If if I want to do you know this army, and I can't find the models locally, I'm just going to print or have someone print it for me. Mm-hmm. And you know I I don't know what Games Workshop thought pattern is on it, um, or if they're trying to drive traffic to their site, if they're trying to drive people to their own stores. But you know their stores aren't set up for people to game in. They're not set up really for yeah. people to do yeah, community. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's there's barely space. You know, if you and I decided we wanted to go Saturday to play at their store, we probably won't get a table to play. We probably have to play somewhere else. You know, yeah. it's it's they're there to be a a games workshop bodega where you walk in, grab your shit, and go home. And and you know, I I just don't think you know we don't have one of those in our area, so mm-hmm. it's not this an option for people. Is- two and a half hours away <laughs> yeah i think there's one in oklahoma somewhere and then there's one in kansas city somewhere yeah. so you know two and a half three hours no matter which way you go right and so you know i've noticed a, a big push pushing people into 3d printing you know mm-hmm. and i'm s- sitting with a 3d printer over my shoulder so i can't really you know oh, I, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting two feet from one right. so i so can't either you, you can't fault them <laughs> to a certain extent you know because there's been stuff i've wanted that i can't get that some artist online has created a file that will be that will work as a third party model and you know so instead of waiting two months to hope something comes in you go print it and you know i'm not sure that's healthy long term and and i'm hoping it kind of starts to clear up because you know, I don't mind 3D printing odds and ends, but I don't want to print whole troop units. You know, I don't yeah, want to print whole armies. And and I'd rather sell the models to people because I like the look of the GW stuff. I like the look and yeah. feel of the game. And, you know, we've seen games out in the community where everybody does the catch as can, play whatever you want models. And, you know, it looks like somebody just basically emptied their, you know, their old hobby box and, you know, playing, you know, playing weird shit on the table. It doesn't doesn't give a good aesthetic or a good feel so like your opponent has to remember like okay so you're playing those 
So those orcs are breachers, and the tau that you have over there are what again? They're electric cowboys. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> like it's it, it makes it really tough. Like it, it's a hard enough tactical game where you're trying to figure out what you need to do. Like I need to take this objective. I need to get rid of that threat. I need to pose this threat. You know, you'd be like, what are those again? <laughs> yeah. It's... But at the same token, like you can't really blame people for like uh, like I want to play a new army. Like, let's use the example of uh, Space Marines and the Redemptor, right? So the the new Marine Codex comes out last November, and the Space Marine Redemptor is like a ridiculous value for Space Marines. Like there's always something that's a ridiculous value for an army, and and, and people want it. That model wasn't in stock when the the when the book came out. Now, right. Whether this is due to manufacturing problems or whatever or whatever their supply line constrictions are like it just wasn't available and so people started scouring all the stores and then all the stores were out and then people started going online and all the the cheap ones they could find online were gone and then like uh, redemptors were going for 125 135 dollars a model for a 60 dollar model that you know just just sealed in box there were people that were putting out assembled painted ones that were selling for 200 250 yeah, go look at a uh, go look at death child terminators on ebay and it's it's yeah, our yeah. it's it's already there's been you know we know admex the next book coming has mm-hmm. your admex section been cleared out yet mm. they are working on it <laughs> every uh every admex Pretty kit fair. i had on the shelf is gone like I, I went and looked and someone last weekend came through and bought pretty much every admex box i have you know, yeah. and on the website, there's a lot of stuff not available for order already for Admex. So people are already yeah. preemptively like, well, I don't know if this is going to be good or not, but I don't want to miss out on it. So they're snagging it, you know. Well, and, and that's what the, that's what the whole point of the FOMO is that that's what the pandemic has taught people is like a new codex is coming. I have no idea what's going to be good. I have to get everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, in, in that instance, like Dark Eldar, you know, people are playing Hellions again. You know, when's the last time Who you saw? Had hellions? I had hellions well, anywhere. <laughs> I had hellions all over my garage, and I sold them all. So, <laughs> I dude, I I wound up I think with thirty plus bikes and twenty some hellions in my garage that I found that I I sold. So I divvied them out to buddies, and I didn't mark them up like an asshole. So um, I speak. Are you trying to find them online right now? What are they going for? A lot. So speaking it's of like, like, like yesterday, I I, last week it was like a hundred for ten. Yeah. <laughs> I dropped a box of, uh, I think, uh, five bikes and uh, five Hellions in the uh, mail for Ben Sherwin yesterday. So I'm out of my stock. I'm done. But it's, you know, and that's just it is it's hard to, you know, when we used to be able to financially, you know, so if you're listening to this out there, you know, be considerate of what your stores are going through because most of them like us, we don't charge for gaming space. You know, most of your stores, you know, you walk into your store you're not paying for that that table space to be on like you're there out of the graciousness of the store owner that pays that real estate every month and allows you to play on that table you know that's basically at at his whim you know and because he's never counted on that to make money before you know And, and as store owners start getting traditional ways of money being taken away from them you know you guys might not be surprised if you turn around one day and a store is charging for game tables you know it's I'm not saying it's going to happen here locally or anything like that, but in my mind, when I'm going through, like, what are my options? You know, I'm weighing all my options because I had this revenue stream that was one of my main revenue streams that has been dried up or taken away from me. And now what are my answers to resolve that? Because my bills have not went down. You know, my my rent is the same as it was pandemic time. You know, mm. when I had to pay it, when I was trying to hustle and sell everything online, just like you were, you know, we'd go buy each other's stores. And I remember seeing all your stuff for Amazon out on the table and eBay. And, and uh, you know, so as these stores adjust to the new GW where, you know, traditionally when an army book came out, we would stock up on product. Mm-hmm. So like if we knew AdMech was coming out, we would stock up on AdMech to make sure we had it on the shelf for new players. And like right now, if you and I wanted to stock up on AdMech, because we knew the book was coming out, we can't do so. You know, so well, even if you wanted to, you couldn't because they're so far behind on orders. Like by the time you you get the announcement, hey, Admet book's coming. If we had gone that day and placed orders for everything, 
that was available so that we were first in line in the queue does it does does the, do those orders actually make it to our shop before the codex does yeah and it's it's i am glad though that they're you know we're at the pause right now which we'll get to there here in a second but like today i finally got notification for two orders that i'd made um over a month ago and they mm-hmm. were they were customer orders they weren't you know, me just stocking my shelves or me doing whatever. They were people that like, I want these specific items. You know, can you ship me? You know, can you get me mm. these items? And like three quarters of that order still wasn't fulfilled. You know, and mm-hmm. and and then now most of that stuff is over a month old. And mm. if someone went and bought it somewhere else or found it somewhere else, you know, I'm not going to really hold much against them. I'll, I'll try and you know, I'll try and sell it. I'm going to probably be able to sell it, but. Um, they've created this weird thing where I can't rely on them anymore to be one of my mainstream revenue, you know, my main streams of revenue. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I don't know if that's the same case for you or not, but that's been the case for me is like, I can't rely on them to make sure I get my product on time, make sure I have the stuff for releases, you know, and we hadn't even got into the allocation issue yet. So oh, yeah. I'll let you dive in before we get too far down the road. But like, so like with the case of people ordering stuff, so like even the information that we get now is not valid because like say somebody comes in and they say, uh, I want to order a a Belisarius call. I see he's in stock on the GW website, order it for me. And you're like, okay, but just so you know, the orders are so far behind that the fact that it's in stock today is not relevant because I'm going to make that order today. It's going to go into a backlog of orders that are like four to six weeks out. What matters is, is that thing going to be in stock when they get around to pulling my order? Right. There's no way of knowing. And so uh, I don't know how many times you had this happen where people were like, they, they want to come in to order something, you order it a couple of weeks that go by. They're like, Oh, well, uh, shows us on the website. I'm going to order it off the website. They go to order it off the website. Their order goes into the queue. And then by the time it gets to their order, it's out of stock. And they're like, but GW's website told me it was in stock. Right. Well, <laughs> it was when you looked at it. But it only matters when your order gets picked, packed, and shipped. Right. And that's the, that's the huge problem is that uh, there's so much. Uh, I, I, have, I have 10 grand on back order with Games Workshop of stuff um and uh another thing that people might not realize is the financial side of how it's hurting the 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 small game stores right Uh, because when you order stuff well they make you pay for it right when you order it and they assume that like say you make an order and it's a thousand dollars and so they charge you a thousand dollars whether you're on credit or you are paying by cash or credit card, like they will charge you that full amount right there because they assume we have the the ability to fill that order at 100%. And given normal times and normal constraints, like you, GW is really pretty good about filling most orders. You might have like one or two things normally not be on an invoice, and you're like, oh well, that's that, that's one thing. But like you place that order for a thousand dollars, it doesn't get processed for more than a month. When it finally gets processed half the things or more aren't there on your order and so your order now totals four hundred dollars you right. paid a thousand dollars to them for 30 days for them to send you four hundred dollars wholesale worth of product and then give you a credit which you then have to chase down with them to go you still owe me six hundred dollars though because i paid all that and they're like oh yeah like, we'll we'll work on giving you a credit and it everybody's short staffed with the pandemic because i i know they still aren't in the memphis office yet so everybody's just scattered everywhere. And so anytime you give people more work to do, it just slows the process down. Hey, more. every time you hit the desk, it bumps up my mic. So, Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, every, every time you give them something additional to do, like it's just going to up their workload and slow the whole process down even more. Like, and there's, there's really no way around that it, unless you're going to do a pause on the ordering. Yeah, and it might have been the right move. I, you know, I know it's kind of it's kind of painful to think about or hear, 
but I do think it might be the right move. Like I said, you know, the, I do know that we're mm-hmm. in the pause. You know that we're, you know, I've like I said, I got emailed today of two orders that got out that mm-hmm. finally got out after a month, and so like I'm happy to see that because I know at least I'll get some kind of revenue or income, you know, based on those orders getting out. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I just don't want it to be like this long term. I want it to go back to the way it was before, where you know, I order my shit, or I know a release is coming up, and people are able to just come in and buy the release without all the extra thinking, the extra steps, the extra chasing stuff down, you know, and then, mm-hmm. and then before we close, I want to get to the big boogeyman of the allocation. Ugh. When when in the history of ever did you think that Games Workshop was going to allocate you on how much shit you were going to buy from them? You, you know, back back like 2012 uh, in that era when they, they they did allocations back then it was like i remember tau was the first one they came out with in 2012 where they just weren't really ready to deliver the product that people wanted with the codex because that codex hit you know like some of the codexes are hitting now that it was just a meta breaker like and everybody wanted all of the models and and so you ordered all of the models but you didn't have the ability to to uh, meet that demand but since that time, there really hadn't been anything like that. Like, if you wanted, you know, I, I want to order 25 of that model. Or, or, order 25. But when the pandemic started, like, allocations started becoming a thing. And that's that's understandable. But uh, a lot of the problem with GW is that they did not adjust their release strategies for the realities of their supply constraints. So they're pushing out stuff with new codexes but they're not they're not dropping uh, uh, models to support those releases and so like for example the Bellacore that's coming out this weekend you know stores got allocated to yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and oh, okay yeah that's uh, that's like uh, being locked in a shark cage with a big Mac yeah <laughs> it's not gonna slow them down for long I had I had emails from customers already requesting the two you mm-hmm. know separate customers not the same customer requesting those right. two right before the saturday that bellacore even went up for pre-orders mm-hmm. and i had to go back and tell people beyond the two that like you know try hero complex try this other shop we mm-hmm. we we don't have them so you know and it's a shame that like before the model even went up for pre-sale that i was already above and beyond you know mm-hmm. my customer demand for all- allocation you know, and, and while we're there, let's talk about Curse City. You know, <laughs> uh, the Saturday, I got allocated eight Curse Cities. Mm-hmm. The Saturday that Curse City went up for sale, guess how many pre orders I had for Curse City? Uh, 12. I, I had above and beyond the eight. Mm-hmm. And I had to tell people no. You know, I think mm-hmm. I had, I think, I don't think I had 12, but I think I had 10 or 11. And I had to tell some people no because they just didn't have I didn't have the boxes to sell them, you know. And, and I'm looking at as like that's missed, you know. Like I missed out on that money. Like I could have made that money, you know. And, and I'm I'm you know being the being what it is. Like I'm sure some of those people went on GW's website, mm-hmm. you know, tried to order it through GW or whatever, or went to the you know some other place, and you know I missed out on them dollars because GW said that I I don't have this. And uh, mm-hmm. your Curse City story is a lot different than mine, even. So, what was your what was your shenanigans? So, so part of that is that they are trying to drive people to the website, and you understand, like when when something comes out, like these things are manufactured a you know, hundred days beforehand, minimum, right? So, like these things are already in production before they start spoiling them, but maybe even before they announce that it exists. And so, once they start spoiling it a week before, like all our stuff is already locked in. Like they've, they've locked us in 14 days out. Like how many do you want? <laughs> you know? And, and then with Curse City, they came back and they're like, we originally told you four, but we'll give you up to eight. Right. And we're like, Oh, okay. Well, that, that's, that's cool. That doesn't often happen. And then it, it comes to the, the sellout. Uh, they sell everything out on the website over the weekend with GW. Uh, like it normally happens now because that's, that's the, the, the last recourse that people have to get the models is they order directly from GW and hope that it shows up. But with Curse City, like I ordered my allocation 
and then nothing happened. And so I contacted my rep on Monday, and I was like, hey, you know, normally for the stuff that, that is for sale the next Friday like this with the big stuff, you ship them to us um, the Friday before, and it shows up like midweek, and we, we get staged and ready for it. And he's like, yeah, I haven't seen anything on that. That's weird. Let me check into this. And so he contacts me at the end of the day to let me know, hey, I don't have any update for you on this. And so Tuesday comes around, and I'm like, do you have any update? And he's like, no, no one has a response for me. Like, what's going on? And this continues throughout the week that, that neither my rep or myself can get anybody to <coughs> respond to what the issue is. And so Car City shows up for everybody else, and it goes on sale. And I have to tell the people, I don't have the product, and I don't have an explanation as to why. And so the next week, I'm still like, can anybody tell me where this product is? No, 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 no. And then this last Monday, I get an email that from Games Workshop that says, Curse City replacement order. Dear valued customer, we have the stock necessary to fill your order for Curse City. We will ship them from our Memphis facility this week. Thank you for your patience. And uh, okay, but... <clears throat> Still, what what happened? We don't know. But I did get my invoice on Wednesday that it has shipped, so they should be here tomorrow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, but like it's that's you know, <clears throat> but those are already allocated out to people that that um, didn't get them in the first place. Yeah. Well, if you wind up with the extra, let me know because I did not get one myself, and I would like one. So <laughs> <laughs> apparently they're they're at a there premium are, now. Like, we we feed ourselves last. Uh, that's what I did with Bellacore. Like I, I'm I'm playing. I'm you played me last night. I'm actively mm-hmm. playing Chaos in 40k, and, and that like would be a and I, I can't have the super dope model for 40k because uh, the customers come first. So, mm-hmm. um, well, we probably complained and whined enough. What do you? Uh, is there? A, so what? You, what are you optimistic? Because I, I am optimistic. I hope that this shutdown or this pause is going to bring it back around. That we're going to get back to the GW of old where, you know, I can place my restocks and my my new release orders that week and have them by Friday to go on the shelf for the weekend crew when they come around. And I'm hoping that's the result of this. Do you think that's what's going to happen or do you see anything different? Yeah, I think that's like like life is eventually gonna go back to normal. We uh, we're getting shots in people's arms. Like it's it's we're we're progressing things to where things can start to go back the way they were. Like a lot of the problems with GW is that they're just I think they're still running on one third uh, capacity at the warehouse. Like yeah. it's just there's only so much people can do in a given amount of time. You can't. Yeah, and and I don't know. If- done. I don't think we touched on this, but just I'll throw this out there real quick on this. Uh, and some people don't know how GW's warehouse was working. They had one crew that was doing simply new releases and new release shipments. Mm-hmm. And then they had another crew that was doing restocks, back orders, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so GW could not put the two things on the same order. So mm-hmm. like when they called me or Derek and said, like, what are your new release numbers? Um, that order would go to one part of the warehouse, and then whenever I'd send a restock order for, you know, models or paint that people ordered or stuff I ran out of, it went to another crew. And uh, the other crew was not on the same schedule that the the new release crew was. So, you, you know, you still managed to get your new release orders, which was nice, you know, but they were allocated, you know, and sometimes it was cutting it to the wire. Whereas that back stock or that reorder you know that thing went out in the void and you didn't know when it was going to come back and i hope that's what gets fixed out of this i hope they get it caught up on all their shit and i can start yeah. getting weekly shipments again because if i can get weekly si- shipments i can sell weekly shipments and uh, it's good for my business and that's what the first pause was about in december i mean I, uh, I don't know how broadly it was announced i don't think it was announced like this one was where they actually went out to the player base and said hey we're going to shut down new orders for a while. Right. Um, just back in December, where it was like first week of December, I want to say around the 6th or 7th, that they were like, we're we're getting behind. We're going to shut down orders for the rest of the year. We're not going to take new orders. We don't have new product coming out. We'll come back and, and try and work this out in, in January. And so they started taking new orders January 3rd. But um, uh, the, the problem with 
the two teams is that when new product comes out, they were making it to where like your restock orders are a secondary priority. So the guys that were working on restock, whenever there was something new to go out, they would work with the teams to get everything new out, and it would just push the restocks further back. And so it got to a point where they could deliver the new stuff on time, but it just kept pushing back all those orders uh, for restock. again. And, and, and as you do that, those orders just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so each order takes more time t- to work through, and... Uh, you have to do the back orders uh, on those at each time too, and it just it snowballs that work. So if they're they're shutting it down now, like I, I know I talked with my rep and he said like they added weekend shifts and and sun, uh, Sunday shifts, and they were they were trying like a second shift in order to like hot swap people through the same area, but to keep the numbers in the warehouse down of, of people due to local restrictions. But like there's only so much they can do at that point. But as things start getting better, like I'm optimistic that they'll be able to put more people in the warehouse as more people get vaccinated and, and infection rates, um, knock on wood, stay low. Um, but uh, uh, in in the short term, it's just going to suck. For yeah. A while. Like they have to they have to make a decision like we're shutting down new orders for a while, and that sucks for the the, the players because like you're playing in a game that, I mean we've talked about this a lot with with 40k where like uh, they're design space was clearly intended to we're going to drop a couple codexes a month and you can debate the wisdom on whether or not that's wise for or shifting a meta that quickly but clearly these books were designed with that in mind and so each book that comes out now hits like like a uh, a 50 pound sledgehammer on thin ice like it's just you know and, and then you know that that codex comes out. People can't find the models. You're scrambling around. Like, it's just it's kind of a miserable time to be a, a GW player right now. And and there's really not a lot of solution for it unless you're just willing to pay obscene prices for stuff. Yeah. Well, That's and it, I am glad they finally made some public like, hey, got to catch your shit up on this because mm-hmm. you know it's I I think sometimes customers you know you tell them that. Because hobby and comic stores being hobby and comic stores, some of them aren't very professional. You know, some of them are professional. And yeah. I, th- I think as a whole, the public kind of has this expectation sometimes that the stores, you know, either fuck off or don't care about their order so it doesn't get placed. And then GW finally making, like, the public announcement and saying, like, hey, you know, this is the situation. We're trying to catch up. Uh, it took a little bit of the weight off of me because instead of me having to repeatedly say this to people – or me Ugh. repeatedly having to tell everybody and they kind of look at you out the side of their eye like, yeah, okay. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being up front with you. You know, this might be a month, might be a month and a half. Some orders have taken two. You know, and they look at you like you're just fucking blowing smoke up their ass. And it's like, no, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. You know, this has been the state of things for a while. And, uh, you know, GW acknowledging that at least took a little bit of pressure off of me you know, in my customer base, and uh, I'm sure you felt a little bit the same way. Oh, yeah. The customers always assume that you should have just ordered more. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I did order more. This is what I got allocated down to. Well, go ahead and then order some more. Well, there's nothing available now. Right. When's more going to be available? We don't know. It's up to the manufacturer. Like, when is more going to be available? And, like, we're in business to sell things to people. So, yeah. like, if we could get a hold of it, we would certainly get a hold of it and sell it to yeah, you. I'm because like, we... <laughs> I'm like that dude on Idiocracy. I like yeah. money. I like <laughs> money. I like money a lot. So, you know, yeah. You know. and, but, it's... Uh, like, and they just kind of assume that, like, maybe, like, I think at first a lot of people were just like, is it that your business is just suffering in the pandemic and you're not spending the money to get the stuff like you should? But once it starts being everywhere, like, I think that was finally the kicker for it when people were like, I can't find this stuff anywhere. I can't find the stuff online. I can't find the stuff in stores. I can't find it on eBay. Like, what's going on? You're like, yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> like, we've been, like, I, I've, I've, I've ordered, I've ordered stuff off of eBay. Like, I, I check eBay every day and every night now to find stuff where, like, is this, like if somebody's selling off something that they want, like oh, that's still wrapped and packaged new. I can sell that yep. in the store. I'll order it and throw it on the shelf. Like, dude, dude, and I've I've been on I that. I can't manipulate those shelves. I've been like uh, I've been like the back room used model dealer, 
for mm-hmm. eight months now. You know, it's like I'm I'm buying collections, flipping collections, and I try and see what guys are posting about or asking for, and I'm like, hey, I got that used. Come in and buy it. You know, and and it's worked somewhat, but you know, it's like the thing. Like I'm, you know, I basically had to open like a a flea market, you know, for Warhammer, so I could stay in the business of you know making money off those models and off the community I got in store. So it's a uh, it's a weird place to be. It's it really is, and I hope it's uh it's not perpetual. And I, I think we're I think we're hopefully getting to a better spot with this step. So um, we can probably close her out there. I'll give you a, a final thought if you got one. And I do appreciate you coming on today. Um, go mm-hmm. check if you're in Wichita. Check out Derek uh, Hero Complex Games and Entertainment over at Twenty uh, First and Woodlawn. You know, and of course my shop over if you're in Wichita Wizards ICT. Thirty first Seneca. Thirty first Seneca. Um, we're opposite in towns. We work together. We try not to step on each other with events. So, if you're coming to town, it's more than likely either one of our stores. So, Derek, I turn it to you. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Like things are going to get better as things get better. Like, I like GW, like any other company, wants to make money, and they're, they're suffering from whether it's it's the it's pandemic related or it's just demand related or it's their own decision making or it's a combination of all three like they've they will figure a way out of it like and this pause is necessary and i'm very grateful that they made the announcement to the player base to let them know like hey (laughs) what you've been hearing is correct we knew we do need to uh, get caught up here and that has taken a lot of weight off because with people expecting like they expect that you'll have it you know like get it get it in like we're trying and so like as things get back to normal that's going to get back to normal and i'm really looking forward to the day where we can be complaining about um man there's too much product coming out (laughs) they're dropping too many codexes at once it's messing up the meta i don't like these new models like i really hope Uh, we get back too much too much shit to pay for so yeah. yeah, it's a part of the. I think part of the the Warhammer hobby is complaining about the Warhammer hobby, and that's on the the player side and the retail side. So it's yeah. uh, we're just continuing the hobby. So yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming on. We'll have Derek back on someday. Um, like I said, he's one of my best friends. Uh, we talk, hang out all the time. So uh, I'll try and bring him on. We have some other retail related stuff to stop talk about. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Give us some feedback. Leave comments. Uh, hit us up on the show. And uh, go show Derek a little love at his store if uh, if you so choose to. Thanks for listening. Oh, Flying Monkeys war, uh, Wargaming on YouTube. Yeah, that, that too. And also, buy tickets to Flying Monkey Con. We still got some available. Bye, Felicia.